America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, and welcome to the very full Monday, April 4th Board of Aldermen meeting. Uh, let us start with minutes from the previous meeting. I'm assuming you had a time to review it. Can I get a motion to accept it? So moved. Second. Got a motion has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. Thank you. All right. Outside the rail, we're going to start tonight with uh, Brendan Duffy from the RRA. Mr. Duffy. All right. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So I have a couple folks with me tonight. Uh, I have John and Zach Hale, who are, you're welcome to come on over this way, uh, of Hale Resources out of Bennington. I have Lyle and Tyler uh, with Cedar and Mary Cohen with the Housing Trust. And uh, we have been talking really over the last three months about uh, the College of St. Joseph campus and what could happen there. Uh, as most people are aware, we had a developer uh, who we were working with for about a year and a half. Um, that seems like it is no longer moving forward as of the end of the year. Uh, so we certainly have a viable asset there for the city and the community. Uh, in our discussions, it seems like housing will be a key component of that in some way. Uh, but maybe not the, uh, the total uh, use of that campus space. Um, so what we're doing, or what we have been doing, is trying to line up uh, a plan of how to move that forward. And I think uh, what we've determined is bringing in a third party uh, in the form of a consultant that's worked on different development projects uh, and doesn't have any preconceived ideas about what could happen there might be the best thing that we could do right now. Uh, engaging other stakeholder groups, and we're aware there are at least two other groups that have ideas uh, that they've talked about uh, for future use of the campus, uh, as well as the housing component. So um, what we are hoping is that we could get some support from the city um, in the form of some funding um, that would allow us to look at not only kind of bringing in uh, this uh, community planning element, but also looking at some pre-development and feasibility of uh, what can and could not happen there. So again, I have uh, some folks here. Uh, Mary has actually offered, because this will have a large housing component, to maybe lead this um, group of stakeholders forward. Um, we'll see exactly how, how this will all flush out. And the, the Hales are here today because they're very interested in Rutland. Uh, they actually just recently purchased the 120 Maple Street property, you may recall. And uh, their business is creating market rate housing, uh, which we know we need here in the city. So I will turn it over to any of those other folks. Uh, just a quick, uh, a quick moment, if you'd like. And, uh... Good evening, everybody. Thank you for letting me speak. Uh, my name's John Hale. I was actually born in Rutland 57 years ago, so I kind of did the big circle in life. But uh, we're a pretty established business down in Bennington, and we, we've redeveloped probably about 40 to 50 properties in the last 13 years. We just finished a, a 11 unit that was probably the worst building on the street, and we got a community development block grant, did some mixed housing of affordable housing and, and uh, five market rates in one building, and just completed that in December. And we've kind of hit the ceiling in, in Bennington trying to expand, and we see a lot of opportunity up here to, to actually help some of the, the housing crisis this entire state has. So Zach's a Castleton graduate. He's uh, hopped on board with our, my business and actually is a, a full partner with me and pretty ambitious. He really sees Rutland as something that we really need to be doing. So we see CSJ as a huge opportunity to put some market rate housing with some affordable housing with Mary. We, we've been talking a lot and would like to partner up. It'd be a good private and, and uh, nonprofit to team up and solve some of our issues that we're having in the housing market and along with some other issues with <clears throat> CSJ that maybe some of that other, the other buildings could be utilized, maybe some new construction, utilize the old buildings for, for some other uses. And really the third party is an opportunity to get uh, somebody in as to, to really kind of herd us all together and come up with all the, the ideas that are going around town and really put a comprehensive plan together of what they think would be the best use of the, of the property. So that's really why we're here tonight. We're hoping that you guys will support us. And uh, thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say a couple things. You know, this is 
really um, a unique and, and um, fabulous opportunity for this community. And although I might be leading this little piece of this, this is really much bigger than the Housing Trust of Rutland County. But what we want to do is move, as we said, move the football to the at least 10 yard line. Um, we have a long ways to go, but let's get it started. Thank you. Well, you can hear me from there. Um, this is a real opportunity for us right now. <clears throat> Property has been tied up for a while, now it's not tied up, and now is the time to bring people together in a very transparent process where we can have every entity at the table, and so that's our plan. So you'll see the Housing Authority talking to the Housing Trust, to talking to us, to talking to Brennan, bringing in developers who may have an interest. Things are going to line up, I think. <clears throat> it just It's going to take a little time, and we're going to need to continue to be patient, but I think good things are going to happen. And I think what you're going to see is that it's going to be controlled locally, that there'll be people here who are taking care of Rutland. So, thank you. And, and I'll just add, obviously, uh, Heritage Family Credit Union is also involved in some of this discussion, and we are uh, working with them to figure out a way to get some level of site control to allow us the time that, that we feel we need to, to begin the planning process. So, I guess uh, if there was a referral to the Finance Committee uh, to come out of this, that would be wonderful. So moved. So second. We have a motion that's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, sorry. Any discussion, questions, comments before we... Okay. So All those in favor? If, if I may, I, I believe there's a dollar request for... ARPA or? We're going to, I think, wait and refine that a little bit before, before throwing a number out. But yeah, when we come to that committee meeting, we will have a, a number. Thank you. Mind. Okay, now, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else Thank like you. to speak <laughs> outside the rail this evening that's not on the agenda? Mr. Gibson. Yeah. Did you want to go? Uh, this is not outside the rail. Just, just get up. No, just get ready. Q and up. You realize we have <clears throat> so many here, people here to advertise to. <clears throat> you know that either I'm coming asking for money or <laughs> advertising something. Well, tonight I want to thank you again for the money that you are making available, assuming we get a grant for the hub co-working space in downtown Rutland. For those of you that don't know what that is, the Mer Opera House is being fit up to be a co-working space and we're hoping to have a digital economy job incubator there. To celebrate that and to kind of kick it off, we have a mixer coming up on the 14th, courtesy of the rec department, thank you, Kim. We'll be at Rutland Rec, the gym, and five o'clock, come down, Rutland Town's jazz band is gonna be playing there, Roots is gonna have food, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Hub Co-Works and what that's going to look like in the future. And we'll have a mini reveal so you can see what it looks like now and hopefully what it will look like in the future. So we hope that you'll come to that mixer, 5 o'clock to 7 or so, whenever anyone leaves. Not this Thursday night, but next Thursday night, the 14th. Also would like to let you know that almost half the players of the Real Rutland Feud are in the room. Um, <laughs> So I'm, again, advertising, the Real Rutland Feud is back. And on April 30th at the Paramount Theater, thanks to Eric Millette, there will be 10 teams teaming up to win the trophy that now Comcast has. And we're hoping that maybe one of the teams in the room may win that. And we have the fire department. Now, this will be the culminating game with the fire department taking on the police department or vice versa and it will be very exciting. We hope you'll go online, buy tickets at the Paramount Theater Ticket uh, Center called the Heritage Family Ticket something. Okay. <laughs> he does much better. And Eric will be the host that night, and he is a hoot, so come in and join us there and see who wins that. And finally... Yes, or maybe. <laughs> we shall see. Okay. I will say the meanest picture is that like, great. Yeah, you got that. Okay. Um, finally, Mr. Millett, would you like to join me? Sure. Okay. Um, you'll recall some time ago we paired up, we being Cedar and the Paramount, paired up because we wanted to do a parade of heroes. 
in downtown Rutland. We wanted to celebrate the fire department, the police department, oil delivery people, grocery store clerks, everybody that kept the economy going and are keeping the economy going during the pandemic. And so we've teamed up and we were going to do it a year ago, and then we were going to do it nine months ago. And you know how things changed with the pandemic. So we went with the flow, and now, courtesy of Heritage Family Credit Union, our signature sponsor, we, will, we would like to do this on August 27th, which is a Saturday, and we're hoping that you're okay with that. And if you are, then what we'll do is we'll get all the correct paperwork going, because Henry's already got it lined up for us, so all I have to do is fill it out. And so if you are okay with the Parade of Heroes and Whoopie Pie Festival, stay tuned for exciting scenes on that just to see what that looks like, but that would be August 27th on a Saturday. Okay. Nailed it. I got nothing left. Thank you, though. You did support this in the past. Yeah. It's an important thing for downtown. I only to thank those that did carry us through the pandemic, but will carry us forward. So thank you for giving it your good graces last time, and we look forward to it this time as well. Thank you. Any questions on any of that? Before I ask the mayor for some money for the Parade of Heroes and Whoopie Pie Festival. <laughs> You're next. Best <laughs> Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Any other individuals want to speak from outside the rail that is not on the agenda? Wonderful. Moving on to communications from the mayor. Okay. Well, it's going to be hard to follow up those two, but I will do my best. So good evening, everyone. Um, I do have uh, a few things I wanted to touch on tonight. Uh, I'll try to get through this as quick as I can. You've got a packed agenda. Um, first, uh, as you all know, this is good news. We have been successful, we being the city, in our request for a $300,000 transportation grant for work around the Amtrak station uh, adjacent to Walmart. That grant comes with a requirement for a 25% match, as we knew going in, which, uh, according to my figures, is $75,000. So um, the, uh, we are committed, uh, the uh, mayor's office, to fulfilling this. And uh, I would like to request, if I could, the finance committee to act on what my initial request was when we were talking about ARPA funds for a $400,000 seed money um, uh, from the ARPA fund for expressly that reason. And we'd like to be able to uh, get that all lined up and be able to confirm that we had that money uh, set aside to, uh, in order to obtain the grant. And I appreciate uh, any work that uh, you can do on the finance committee to get that going. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So that's good news. Second, um, I had a conversation with Devin uh, earlier uh, last week. I see a committee meeting has been scheduled for uh, later in the month to talk about the closure and the locking of the Center Street hallway linking the transit center uh, to Center Street. Uh, it was reported in the local uh, media that it was ordered closed uh, by LAS, which actually is not true. Uh, they did recommend that uh, that uh, that area be locked up, but I actually ordered it locked, and I did it for safety reasons. LAS is actually not responsible for upkeep there. They are, by contract, responsible for levels two uh, upwards to the top of the parking deck for the parking area over at the transit center. But by default, they've ended up um, being the ones that have overseen that, uh, that walkway. And as has been reported, there's been uh, graffiti there. There's been uh, a lot of um, unwelcomed uses for that hallway, which was intended uh, you know, for uh, a way to access the Paramount Theater and Center Street and all the businesses there from people parking in the, in the parking deck. So um, I just wanted to make sure uh, I, um, I, 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 I got that out there and made sure people were um, um, aware of, um, you know, what the situation is over there. Um, I know there is going to be a discussion with uh, folks at that meeting. Uh, the buses involved in this, um, you know, they've had their uh, offices locked up for uh, several uh, years. And COVID related, I think, at the beginning, but for other reasons too. And, uh, you know, people are going to be accessing the bus. Um, need to have a place where they can sit and wait and be done and do so in a safe environment. And I think that that's the place that it should be done. So I'm hoping that that uh, facility will be opened up in the near future. And uh, I look forward to that discussion. Uh, beyond that, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, 
I guess the next thing I wanted to talk about was the situation down at uh, the hotels on South Main Street. Um, again, uh, referencing uh, local media, there was a article uh, regarding the uh, both the Holiday Inn and uh, the Quality Inn, but mostly uh, talking about the uh, the Holiday Inn and their Act 250 permit and um, the situation that was going on down there. Uh, what's happened is th uh, the state and um, through no official notification, I just heard this second hand, has changed their policy. And what's going on now is that they have decided to make the, um, the, the, the folks that are uh, accessing those facilities into long-term homeless uh, facilities, upwards of 18 months uh, with no real end in sight. And you know that's a, a situation that uh, really has a lot of negative effects on the city, not only uh, with police response, but lack of rooms and meals that we, uh, we could have been accessing, and uh, just a number of other uh, issues that, uh, that negatively affect us. Plus the fact is that these decisions are being made without any direct input from the city. Uh, and uh, so when I found that out about, about that la the middle of last week, I uh, convened a meeting on uh, Friday where I had the state at the table and uh, uh, chief of police was there. There were several other folks uh, from the city. Uh, they were all, uh, building inspector was there. And we had a frank discussion about, you know, some of our concerns and about, you know, getting to know what, what is the long-term plan. Now we were told that ultimately they want to be able to transition folks uh, out of the uh, hotels and into long-term housing. But, <clears throat> Frankly, I don't see that happening anytime soon. There's just no facilities. The housing, you know, is an issue here in the, in the, town, in the city and throughout the state of Vermont. And so um, the least that we can ask the state is to please, you know, communicate with, with us on a regular basis. Uh, I've asked them to, uh, if they would meet with us monthly and meet with my office so I know what's going on and if there are any changes in, in those, uh, in, in, you know, in the, in the situation. Now, I don't begrudge. Uh, there's a homeless situation here in the city as there is in other communities. There are people that are legitimately need housing down there that are looking to transition themselves out into permanent housing and make their lives better. But we also know there's an awful lot of people that are not doing that. And there's, uh, there's folks that are accessing these vouchers that are from out of, uh, out of town and out of state. And my information is that it, all it takes is somebody to get off the bus or get out of a car and ask for a voucher and they've got it in their, in their house down there. And you know, frankly, I just don't think that that's what the uh, idea of the whole plan was. So um, it's a concern. Uh, it's something that uh, we need to keep on top of. I'm not asking the board for any uh, action, but I just wanted you to be aware of what the situation is and what the changes uh, that are happening down there um, at, at that facility. So if I can just, please, if I can please. interrupt you. Is sure. it just the holiday Cortina or are they also looking at the quality in? So it is the quality in, it is the holiday in, it's both. both. Correct. There's about 150 folks at the uh, Cortina Inn presently with uh, the numbers look to be increased. And there's, I believe, 60, give or take, uh, at the Quality Inn. And, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot. So if I could ask the chief, um, is there a way or could, could there be a way to keep track of the impact on the police department with uh, calls or crime related issues associated with those hotels because I think that's the conversation that needs to go back to the state when they meet with the mayor on a monthly basis. Certainly. It's something we do. And um, you know, again, last year, we talked this before, last year, the, I think it was over about a year period, there were, I think, close to 300 calls for service. Um, I think you know, we meet every two weeks and we go through all addresses in the city where we've responded at least three times in a two-week period. And I think <clears throat> three weeks ago was the first time the quality of in showed up as one of our three people locations. So I think it's a, as a result of what we had asked for last year in terms of um, sort of resources. Right. Um, because last year was sort of out of sight, out of mind, they put everyone up here. But we had met last year and had some, you know, I think our meetings and our persistence, I think, paid dividends. Um, so we'll continue to watch it. Um, and so far, it hasn't been quite like it was last year. But it's still an issue. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, with no end in sight. So. 
And I think that's all I've got, uh, if anybody's got any questions. Alderman Gillum. This also is a hardship on the hospitality industry. That means we don't have any people coming to Rutland to stay. Those are offline. So we have less rooms than we did before, and it's pushing people out of town where we need them to be in town. So this is not just a housing issue. It's also a tourism issue. So I think we need to look at the whole picture here. Any other questions, comments? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, additions and deletions to the agenda. We have two additions, and we'll put them in appropriate places. Uh, we have the audit report um, from uh, our treasurer and a special event permit that we'll get to later. Uh, in, in the interest of not making a ton of people wait here, uh, we'll switch. We'll skip ahead to reports of standing committees. Alderman Whitcomb. Thank you, Chair Dungeons. So the Finance Committee met on March 28th. Uh, this was regarding police retention bonuses. Members present of the committee were Davis, Satori, Salvage, Talbot, and myself. Others present were Mayor Allaire, President Dunges, Alderman Mentadio, Alderman DePoy, uh, Commissioner Son Sergeant, Chief Kilcullen, Treasurer Markowski, Attorney Bloomer, Gordon Drusillo, and 14 other members of the Rutland City Police Department. The meeting was called to order at 5.30 p.m. Uh, it began with Chief Kilcullen provided background regarding the evolution of COVID premium pay requests for the police department. He detailed the challenges faced by the department related to policing during the pandemic. Chief Kilcullen discussed the challenges related to attracting and retaining new officers in multiple avenues that, are, that they are actively pursuing. Chief Kilcullen proposed a request of $10,000 retention bonus for each of the 26 individual sworn officers to be paid over a period of time. He suggested an immediate $5,000 payment followed by an additional $5,000 payment to be made at a later date to be determined. Alderman Notori inquired if the bonuses would apply to every employee regardless of, its, of employment duration. Alderman, Alderwoman Davis inquired as to the total amount requested and where would the money come from. Mayor Allaire expressed his support for the retention <coughs> bonus, citing surplus in the salary line item of the police budget. Alderman Davis expressed her support, citing that the funding is already maintained within this year's tax rate. Treasurer Markowski explained that there is an estimated Seven seven hundred and fifty thousand salary dollar or dollars salary line item surplus for this fiscal year. Alderman DePoy commented that while recruitment is important, the retention of officers may be the most significant issue facing the police department. Alderman DePoy further suggested that we draft a letter to the Vermont legislator suggesting the retention bonuses be paid be considered for hazardous pay, allowing for bonuses to be tax exempt. Alderman DePoy suggested that we look at base pay of officers moving forward in the budgeting process. Alderman Notori acquired what the collective bargaining agreement entailed from the previous year. Attorney Bloomer provided an overview of the agreement. There was discussion among the group regarding the appropriate timeline of payment distribution. Alderman Savage inquired if this would change the nature of the ARPA request for the police department. Chief Kilcullen indicated it would reduce the total amount of the original ARPA request regarding COVID premium pay. Alderman Talbot requested that Chief Kilcullen report back to the board if the bonuses are successful in retaining officers, noting that there is little historical evidence for, to suggest the retention bonuses are effective. A motion was then made to recommend to the full board the approval of a $10,000 retention bonus totaling $260,000 to be paid to 26 sworn officers from the existing surplus in the police department salary line item and to pay the bonuses through two installment payments to be determined by the police chief and administration. The motion passed 5-0, and I so move. Second. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Any discussion? Questions? OK, hearing none. Oh, I'll Thank you. Um, uh, so first, I'm uh, very much in support of this for the reasons I stated in committee. Um, you know, the reduction of police officers throughout the force is putting a lot on the officers who remain. We want to keep them, and also because of the lack of officers, we want to keep them, but we also, you know, they are picking up more of the stress. One of the things that I talked about in the, or I asked about in the um, committee meeting was this idea of um, we're pushing towards recruitment, which we've been pushing towards over the past however many years, and as Chief stated, this is a statewide problem, maybe a national problem. Um, and it's going to be hard to, re to recruit additional officers. Um, I'm also then looking at the uh, police reporting numbers and the level of um, non-criminal complaints and who's responding to those. Um, and we're trying to fill criminal, uh, you know, trying to fill sworn officers. I know in this next year, starting July 1, you have a new position as a community mediator. I'm not sure exactly what you're calling it. But it really feels like one of the other strategies in retention is to help relieve the call volume on the current officers. And I think 
you know, we can keep on going down the idea of recruiting new officers, which of course we need to do, but I really think that needs to be a push on that other side of helping take the pressure off of the non-criminal complaints. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the attorney does not, is not a big fan of making motions contingent on other motions, so I won't do that. Um, but I really would appreciate a report back from uh, the, the, the chief and maybe the commission about how are you handling this in not just the, we need to get more officers, we need to get more officers, we need to get more officers. We gotta change how we're doing it. And so I don't wanna make it contingent on the benefit of, of the folks here, but I really do think that's an important piece for us to see. And one more note, um, Alderwoman Davis has uh, <clears throat> uh, had me thinking this way since I've been on the board with her, that every $100,000 is a penny on the tax rate. So by giving this out to folks, um, we're gonna see about $38 are not gonna go back to the taxpayer. I think that the average taxpayer is absolutely willing to spend that $38 a year to keep our police happy. Um, I would like us to also support our police through the other ways that I've been talking about. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, discussion? Alderman Gillum. Uh, I'm sorry <clears throat> I didn't attend that meeting, but I'm very much in favor of this. Um, I live in a neighborhood that's a, at risk neighborhood. And we need to start, send a strong message out there that we support our police 100%. We're not going to be a town that's not going to do that. I think it's very important that the, the people are involved. And I think the people, like you said, old Chris, that the investment is very important. And I think people are not going to have a problem investing in that because I think it's very important to keep the cops where they are right now and then find new positions for sure. Real quick, um, okay. given the expected surplus, is it possible that we could expedite that hiring of the community officer before July 1? Uh, ironic, we, we just met today to finalize sort of um, that position in terms of the job description and some union implications. Uh, our plan is to, is to present something uh, to the union uh, this week and then meet with them in two weeks. Um, but it's exactly what we're trying to do. Again, you know, sort of inventorying what we're responding to, identifying what police officers need to respond to and what they don't need to respond to. So, um, you know, this particular position, in terms of that we talked about today, what training is involved, right? The training involved, de-escalation, mediation, conflict, resol conflict resolution. What authority do they have? Absolutely none. Um, again, but they're there to, to solve some sort of dispute. Um, but again, we, police don't have any authority over many of these issues either. So it doesn't make sense for us to respond, but train someone in, in those things, de-escalation, conflict resolution, mediation, to respond to the types of calls that we have no authority over. Um, and so that's kind of where we're starting from. And, and there's quite a number of those types of calls that we respond to on a daily basis. And, but you're absolutely right. So with fewer officers, our officers responding to more calls, um, our call volume isn't necessarily up per se, but the number of calls our officers, each individual officer responds to on a, on, a, on a shift by shift basis has increased because you know, fewer numbers have kind of spread those calls around. So this, this will help that. And if we can, uh, again, finalize some things you know, in the next couple of weeks, um, as you said, the, uh, the money's there to support the position now. And so that's, uh, that's the hope. Thanks. And if I could just add to what the Chief said uh, to what you uh, mentioned, Chris, if we can get this person on board early enough, we will have at least some idea of, you know, how it's working out by the time budget season comes, you know, in uh, October and November. And if it is indeed working out and it's something that we want to enlarge, then I'm more than willing to, to look at that and put it in the budget if, if indeed this is not solving the problem, but certainly helping a, a crisis over the PD. You know, just in terms of the impact we think this uh, this will have on, on the membership, you know, I know one, Tim Rice, one of our officers, is, was personally recruiting an individual, um, having conversations over a period of time on attracting this individual to the Rutland City Police Department. And then uh, after he had a conversation after the finance committee meeting, and this individual saw the commitment, you know, to, to the police department and put the application in pretty much right away. So... Um, that's sort of a success story so far. Um, hopefully we'll have more going forward. Any other comments, questions, discussion? So with that, we have a motion. It's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your support.
meeting Run adjourned while you six can. Yeah. You're welcome to leave if you want or stay if you want. Yeah, it only gets better. <laughs> Thank you very much. to move his budget around. Yeah, we don't need to. No, he's good on that. I'll be right back. All right. Might cool off a little in here now. There you go. Okay. Uh, Alderman Atori. So the uh, Public Works Committee met on March 30th, 2022, to take up the Alpine Pipeline Company Sewage Agreement. I served as chair. Other committee members present were Alderman Whitcomb and Neary. Other aldermen present were uh, uh, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Dungis, Alderwoman Taddeo, and Alderman Talbot. Others present were Mayor Lair, Matt Bloomer, City Attorney, Jim Rotundo, Commissioner, Commissioner Public Works, Mary Markowski, Treasurer, Frank Heald from the Alpine Pipeline Company, and Jack Crowther. The meeting convened at 5.30 p.m. to discuss the amended and restated sewage agreement with Alpine Pipeline Company. Attorney Bloomer briefed the committee on what led to this current agreement. The Alpine Pipeline Company was looking to purchase additional allocation for future sewage disposal, and the city attorney and DPW commissioner took the opportunity to review the agreement between Alpine and the city. Frank Heald, representing Alpine Pipeline Company, talked a bit about the history and development of the pipeline and the mutual benefits for the city and the properties that can utilize the pipeline for sewage disposal. Sure. The pipeline runs from the top of Sherburn Pass, down the Route 4 right of way, and into the city, and includes two pump stations. Alpine Pipeline Company conducts regular maintenance on their system and reimburses the city for the costs associated with our DPW crew checking on the two pump stations daily. Frank mentioned that users on the pipeline pay the same sewage rate as city residents, and also that the city receives an ad valorem that is currently approximately $160,000 per year. The current allocation request is for Alpine to purchase an additional 120 units at 2,500 per unit, with an option to purchase an additional 120 at 3,000 per unit. Alderwoman Davis shared her experience of successfully working with Alpine Pipeline Company and the benefits to the city. Mayor Lair discussed his appreciation for Frank's work on this and other projects over the years, as well as the regional benefit a project like this creates. Attorney Bloomer then led the committee through the agreement and some of the changes and clarifications that were made, including codifying the current allocations purchased to date, specifying reporting requirements, and updating fee amounts, among others. All present were appreciative of the detail in this new agreement and the foundation it builds for future discussions. Alderman Neary moved to recommend to the full board that the mayor be authorized on behalf of the city to enter into the amended and restated agreement with Alpine Pipeline Company in substantially the form presented. The motion passed 3-0, and I so move. Second. The motion, it's been seconded. Any discussion, comments, questions? Just comment. So um, Attorney Bloomer just passed out the front summary sheet of some of the changes. Um, I wasn't able to send that to those of you who weren't at the committee meeting, but if you have any questions. He can answer them. Any other questions, comments, or discussion? All right. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Fantastic. Motion passes. Thank you, Alderman Tory. All right. So now we're going to report return to reports and letters from department heads and officials. Uh, we're going to start off, and I'll read it into the record. Um, uh, Chair of Police Commission Sean Sargent has requested a referral. Um, for, well, I'll just read it. The RRA board has reviewed the up. Oh, oh, that's one <laughs> uh, With the passage of cannabis, uh, question one, March 2022, the city must now anticipate applications for retail sale under Act 164 and Act 62. The city's framework for local regulation, evaluating applications, and authorizing operators and locations. Much like the work of the board control commissioners, this has not been established as allowed. Um, and he goes on to say that he's traveling and he can't be here today. 
I believe this has already been referred. Alderman Gillum? Move the letter to charge an ordinance. For we, ref we referred it last meeting. Yeah. This, this letter here? Scheduled. We, re we referred these the, the act specific one, discussion. 64 and 62 that passed on town meeting day. So. April 20th, 530. Okay. Has the police been notified? Were they part of the notification? Yeah. Thank you. So do we do you want to keep the No, you don't feel it's necessary. That's not that's not do some more work we want. Awesome. But this is already referred and, and again that meeting is scheduled for April 20th, correct? All right, fantastic. All right. Any comments, questions? All right, moving on. May I ask a quick question? Yes. Was it an intent that you were having it on 420? <laughs> Honestly, it was. Not. I had to do it. I just but had to do it. I mean, it's it's divine intervention. I okay. think. Okay. It is divine intervention. I, I know. I'll shut up. I won't say anything again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> moving on. Um, Brennan Thank Duffy, you, RA Director, Biop request. Duffy. Hello again. Nice. He's back. All right. So uh, in your packet, you had a memo that I'd sent out. We have another BIAP applicant. Uh, they're actually here today, Mihu and Sunita. And uh, they are going to be opening up an Indian restaurant. Um, most of you probably have seen the sign that went up in the uh, former coffee exchange at 98 and 100 Merchants Row. Uh, it's been a long, vacant uh, storefront there, right in the center of town. So it's fantastic that that will uh, have a new use. And uh, the applicant is uh, meeting all their criteria for the buy app and are requesting a $5,000 grant. And the RA is recommending uh, the approval of that grant from the Board of Aldermen. And if you would like to say something about the new, the new venture, that would be great. <laughs> no, you. Don't be shy. <laughs> and they're all friendly. <laughs> we don't bite. <laughs> well, um, thank you for first of all for giving us this opportunity and you know having us tonight. So yeah, this is our small um, dream work that we are working on it, and pretty soon we are you know we will be open, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a really um, you know successfully running a restaurant that people will love it and uh, you please come <laughs> i'm getting nervous i'm sorry <laughs> so i was telling sunita when we were walking into the building we saw all the police officers walking in and we kind of huddled with them and walked in i'm like sunita what if all these people walk into your restaurant what are you going to do she's like you're going to be there right <laughs> And I was like, this was not my idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we're getting really close to um, close to opening up. Um, in about a month and a half, we plan to open. And um, you know, I'm I'm really happy to have um, you know to open this restaurant. Couldn't be without her. She's going to be. Um, she's she's you know. The saying is true that behind every successful man, there's a woman. Oh. So you know, so I'm I'm really happy to do this. And um, well, I I am like I am in downtown all the time. I have a business here since uh, approximately like uh, five or six years now, and that it's going great. And I was working in TD Bank. Many of you knows me, <laughs> have seen me there. So yes, it was a really a big problem when it was, you know, for lunch and, uh, you know, something like food related thing always. And we were looking what's going on. We cannot eat pizza or, you know, sandwiches <laughs> every day. So, and always I used to bring food in my bank and they used to love it. So that's, uh, that's the one thing that I know I, I can trust my food. And so as my people, so, and we have uh, another uh, uh, business that we got in right uh, when the pandemic was coming through in 2019, which is in Weston, uh, Weston, Vermont. It's beautiful. It's a, a small gas station where suddenly, I mean, we, we have a deli area there and we just decided out of one day, like, why don't we try something here, you know, just to grab and go thing. And it was really good thing, and it, and the whole year, like everything was shutting down. Only the food was keep going, and we survived. So that was a big thing for us, and that made me think, why not here? 
And we have a place, but this is something I really think what we are lacking, what we don't have, it's many options at one place. Like not just a curry, Indian food is typically people think first thing is curry. I mean, of course it is, but I really want to, <laughs> I love curries, but I really want to keep everything of little big from north, west, east, south. Who doesn't really like, they have lots of choice and it's gonna be really, really huge for me. So, yeah. <laughs> and us too. <laughs> yeah. uh, motion to approve the $5,000 buy-up grant from the Solid the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. If you have a motion to suspend the rules, it's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Awesome. And motion to approve the $5,000 grant for the, from the buyout program for Masala Corner. Second. second. Okay, the motion has been seconded. All those in favor? Any Aye. discussion? Well, Oops. sorry. Any discussion? I'm, I'm sorry. Now. You good? Awesome. Okay, we got the eye. Uh, we'll do it again. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two items from Treasurer Markowski. We'll start with the Business <coughs> Incentive Fund and the status of the Emergency Loan Program. That was good. That was good. This, I believe, is it. That was a Danny DeVito statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the request that I have tonight actually has is related to that business incentive uh, assistance fund that we have. And two years ago with COVID, we, I need to correct my um, information that I gave you. We actually um, had 22 loans that we had through that fund. Um, and we have a number of them coming due May 1st and June 1st. And that what I'm asking for is some flexibility in those repayments. Some of those loans are $10,000 and they're due and payable June 1st, I already have some feedback that that is gonna be difficult for some folks. So what I'm asking for is some flexibility in um, repayment agreements on a case by case. Okay. So I'll move to suspend the rules. Second. The motion to suspend the rules, it's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Wonderful. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to authorize the treasurer to work with buy-up emergency loan borrowers to enter into a repayment agreement on an installment basis, not to exceed 18 months. Second. Second. Your motion has been seconded. Any discussion, questions, comments? Uh, Alderman Talbot and then... Oh, no, I didn't have a comment. I was looking at him. <laughs> Alderman Wickham. Thank you, President Hedges. Uh, two questions, just from reviewing the sheet. It looks as though... The majority of emergency loans that were authorized, we have been paid back on, is that correct? Right, we have, yeah. Um, and, and out of the ones that remain sort of outstanding, do we anticipate that there could be a potential ha uh, high default rate, or do we think with an extended well, amount of time? Well, I, I think if we extend those repayments, I think we'll have a good chance of recovering most of that. Okay. Yeah. I will be back in 18 months, and we'll see where <laughs> we stand with it. We'll watch it and see how it goes, but I, I just want to be able to work with the borrowers. So. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion, it's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, there you go, Mary. Okay. Thank right, you. All right, go to the audit report. Yes, and uh, today I received the FY21 audit report, so I emailed that to everyone, and um, the city received an unqualified opinion. That's what we want, um, so that's good news. And I would ask to refer that report to committee, and we'll have the auditor in to present that at the finance committee. So moved. Second. We have a motion that's been seconded. The finance, that is. Fantastic. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Motions to move the audit report to finance for discussion and review. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, Mary. thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, DPW Commissioner Jim Rotundo with a resolution of support for two projects. Hello, everyone. So tonight I'm requesting a resolution of support for two VTRANS grant applications. Uh, the complete applications are in your packet. 
Uh, the first one is for a class two roadway grant and this is a two inch mill and fill on Park Street and we're proposing to do that from South Main all the way to the end of the pavement. The estimated cost is $209,060. And the second project is a structures grant and that is to remove and replace Allen Street culvert number 20 over Hospital Brook. And the estimated project cost is $710,000. Um, both of these projects are scheduled to be done this year. They're, they're both on our, on, our, on our work list. And they're going to be done um, through our grants, through our, our structures grant that was approved several years ago, the $3 million. And, um, and then we're using uh, paving grant money to do the uh, mill and fill. Um, but you know, every year we apply for these grants, and um, the actually the the uh, the culvert cost originally was was estimated at five hundred and ninety thousand, and over the last two years during design, it jumped up to seven hundred and ten. So, um, so we you know we're hopeful that we get some of this money, and that'll take some of the pressure off the uh, the grant funds that we have in hand. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. We have a motion to suspend. It's been seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, great. Motion to approve the resolution. Okay, circulate. Of... Yep, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to restate the motion, motion to circulate for signature. Yep, for the both. resolution of support for both uh, class two and structures district three grants. Second. The motion, it has been seconded. <laughs> Any comments, questions, discussion? Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Clerk, please circulate your signature. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Rotunda. Okay. Superintendent Peters. Uh, so, update on rentals and heritage credit union donations. <laughs> yep. Um, so first I want to thank Anna and Mike for um, coming to see the rec center and I invite any Board of Aldermen to come and visit. We're ever-changing. It's, it's ever-changing space. Um, and I, I thought this would be a good time to talk about um, what we're doing as far as rentals because that was one of the conditions coming into taking over the athletic facility. Unfortunately, we came on right when COVID. Um, so we were surviving and, and, and establishing ourselves, and we have, we have certainly done that. Um, with the changes of more events, which I'll, I'll, I'll highlight a few, um, there were needs. We needed chairs, we needed tables, um, more sofas and comfy chairs, um, and I'll talk about why that was important. And so I had reached out to Heritage, Heritage Credit Union, Matt Lewandowski, which I had reached out to in the past um, when we first moved in to, with the other buildings to see if we could take some of the furniture, um, which he did, he, we donated. And now that we have grown even more, um, I needed 200 stackable chairs for some events that are coming up. And um, last week he said, just go, take whatever you need. Um, so I really encourage you to come and see the facility and what we've done with the space. Um, the events and the sporting events are one thing, but what we're finding is at three o'clock we get the middle school kids. Last month we had about a thousand members. Actually, we had over a thousand members. Half of those are middle school kids and ninth and tenth graders. Our high school kids like to come in, they do their thing, they leave. Our middle school kids don't. They get there at three, they don't leave till eight or nine o'clock at night. So what we had to do was find more space for them. And so having um, couches and comfy chairs was really important and, and um, we're still changing. So we're really excited about that piece of it. But some of the, the events um, that are coming up that are really kind of unique, and again, I never expected myself to be an event coordinator, and we're finding that happening quickly. Um, we partnered with the Special Olympics. I would mentioned that before, so they're actually closing up their session right now in the basketball court. But some of the bigger rentals, we had the USA Gymnastics meet hosted at the rec center. Um, this is through USA Gymnastics, and it went extremely well. We saw over 2,000 visitors come through the rec. 
the feedback we received, um, this was a two-day event, was housing, was not having a, um, places to go overnight, so staying in hotels. Um, Cedar did a great job collecting information for us to hand out at the meet, and also they, um, prior to the meet happening, they sent a document of um, places to stay, which were in Killington, and um, also um, places though in Rutland to eat. So I'm hoping that we saw the benefit of that. We had six se sessions that weekend. We also are starting our AAU tournaments. Last weekend we hosted 22 games in a two day period. Um, that was Castleton. We've partnered with them to host their AAU tournaments. And those are teams that come from all over New England as well. Last, the, the weekend before um, that we hosted the 22 games at the rec center, they had 120 teams in that tournament. We were one of 10 locations in the Rutland County area. So um, that's, that's a, again, we had all of these plans before COVID hit. So now we're really just starting to like go. Um, another interesting one is FW Web reached out. They need a, a big site that they can do a training for 400 people. So um, they're scheduled for a Thursday. And again, there's a rental cost associated and, and these companies have no problem paying that because they need a space. Um, they need a space that's big enough and that they can hold um, 200 plus people. They could use bleachers or they could use the chairs that, were, that we had to go get to, to be able to host that. Um, as, as Lyle mentioned, we're hosting the Cedar Mixer. That's gonna be one of our first events where we're utilizing our equipment. Um, a couple years ago, <clears throat> we purchased, we fundraised for a big screen. We had movie night a couple times before COVID hit, and um, that's a rental fee. Then we're, we're asking someone, an organization to pay. So we set everything up and, and we hold that event. So that's gonna be another, something else you know, happening. And then most of you were aware of the American Red Cross blood drive, which is extremely important to Rutland. <clears throat> The VNA Hospice of Southwest, they did all of their flu clinics with us as well. Um, so we're starting to see this influx and we are busy. And then we're, for me as a superintendent, trying to find that balance because we are here for our community. So during the weeknights, we try to stay very consistent with our rentals, with our AAU teams. We support eight AAU teams that are Rutland, Rutland bound. Um, and then we have open gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The bottom line is you have to check the schedule, make sure. And that's really just for the gym. The rest of the facilities are you know, always open. Even if we're having an event, the you know, racquetball courts are available, the, the three um, spaces for gym and the kids zone room. Um, so I just wanted to say some of those, some things that are coming up for us. Um, we then decided you know, with these outside events, we wanna host our own events. So we are um, hosting a middle school dance for the first time in a very long time. I've, I've seen some comments on Facebook stating, hey, do you, we used to have these years and years ago um, at the old building across the library. I hear a lot of stories when, when people tell me about the old rec centers. Um, so we're really excited about that. We partnered also with, yeah, we, we partnered with Heritage. <laughs> I have a few stories. This is, a, this is going to be a neon theme. We have a youth council that's at the gym now um, because, again, we had all these middle school kids. What activities do you want to see? So we have a youth council that meets, and then our high school college kids lead this because they don't want to hear from me. So they, they plan this dance, and that's going to be in a couple weeks. Heritage um, is going to sponsor a third through sixth grade dance um, that's happening the same night, just a lot earlier than the middle school dance. Um, so... Again, it's just a, a good time. <clears throat> Things are changing. Our rentals have met all of the revenue expectations at Godnick, at Dorgetti, and at the rec center. We are at period nine about, going into period nine, and we are over and above what we had expected. And, and we were pretty aggressive with our numbers this year, hoping that we would get this opportunity, and we have. So I'm really excited to report that. And again, this, this would not have been done without the support of the Board of Aldermen and the mayor. And, and that's in the community, because the community ended up having to vote on this. So I think, you know, kind of taking off of what the police, um, you know, what the chief said is that we do have a lot of support here for recreation, for fire, um, and for police. And, and that is really important to us. 
there's, there's a lot of good things happening. And watching um, grants given out to, to local businesses is, is great. And they're going to get filled, we hope, right? That's why we're having these, these events. So um, thank you. And thank again to Heritage Credit Union for the very gracious donation that they, that they gave us, um, thousands of dollars that we saved in that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the, yeah, thank you for the update, um, uh, Superintendent Peters. <clears throat> Any questions for... Go ahead, Karen. Not a question, but just a comment. My daughter is one of the frequent flyer ninth graders that is often at the rec center playing ball, and just it, the kids love it, and they get so much out of it. So it's a doing an awesome job down there. Thank, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. If I may, um, and thank you, because I think your leadership gets this done, and you've done a tremendous job, and I appreciate it. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you know. Thanks. And again, I invite. Please come by. I don't have to be there. Just come in and walk around. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you. All right, Chief Lovett, you've got three items on the agenda. Let's start with the uh, radio and go from there. Yes. Uh, as you all know, um, I came to the board earlier in the year to ask for permission to go out and solicit RFPs for the uh, replacement of our base radio at the station. Uh, I reached out to four vendors. Four vendors are the only ones in the territories that are all very guarded uh, uh, sales areas. And so I reached out to all four. Uh, two chose not to, uh, to bid, mainly because of the travel distance and the fact that uh, with the cost of traveling, it wasn't worth their time to come in. So um, we solicited the bids from the two remainders, uh, CVC uh, Two-Way, which is our current vendor, and also Wells Communication out of Troy, New York. And uh, after going through the, the uh, RFPs, the committee uh, researched it all and, uh, and looked into the details, and they decided that uh, we would like to go with CBC two-way radio. Now, initially, we had thought that the bids would be somewhere in the $250,000 area, and it turned out the CVCs came in at $197,597. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, get authorized, basically, to move forward and start the replacement. I'll move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion to suspend the rules has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And I'll move to authorize the fire chief, chief to seek proposals uh, for an amount not to exceed, I can't find my paper, 197,597. 597. 597. 25 cents. 25 cents. Yeah. I actually already have uh, the, the proposal. Oh, to CCD. Uh, uh, CC, award. Right, yeah. to award. My award. apologies, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, my motion would be to award. Okay. To award uh, the RFP from CCB two ways for a total cost not to exceed one nine seven five nine seven two. That's the motion. Can I get a second? Second. Second. We have motions been seconded. Alderman Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a question for Treasurer Markowski. Are we in a position to <coughs> release our book funds yet? Or? I would have said because okay. the final rule became effective April one. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Alderman Tory. Thanks. Um, so I wasn't on the board back then, but I was at the meetings. Yes. Um, I don't recall the conversation of um, uh, why we needed to make sure that you also had a radio, the police also had a radio versus combining. Right. Can you help um, me understand that? Yes. Um, just uh, give you kind of an idea. Right now, the city police department does our dispatching, answers our emergency calls. Um, that's a twofold issue. One is our telephone system at the station has been dropping calls. It's a 1969 vintage phone system. We're in the process working with Sarah Magro in getting that replaced. The other thing was our radio was becoming very unreliable and it ultimately did fail. So the police department is currently answering those calls for us. One of the things is emergency management you know, coordinator for the city is the fact that we are very vulnerable. And without getting into too much detail in, in showing our cards, um, redundancy is something that's important. The ability to, during a uh, stressful time with high uh, call volume, you know, in a, a weather situation, for instance, we could take our dispatching back. Currently, if a truck on the scene of a fire needs to communicate to the station, they call the police department, then they trans, uh, transfer the call to us. If we needed to get a hold of a truck in a hurry, 
we've got two options. Run out on the front ramp with a portable radio and hope it works, or call the police department. And, and they've done an incredible job. They have. But we're going to lose something one of these days. That communications delay is an issue. So, you know, it's a redundancy. The other thing is we've lost the ability to page our firefighters individually as a shift. Um, if we have an incident at the airport, we don't have the ability to tone out those individuals. We have to do a general broadcast. It's just another delaying situation. So there's a lot of reasons for the redundancy. And one of the, uh, the best ones that you know, I can offer is if there was a chance that uh, the police department weren't able to dispatch from the police station. We, uh, last fall, as you remember, we had a situation where we had to evacuate the dispatch. They could, at that time, come to the fire station and do all the dispatching pretty seamlessly. That can't happen today because there is no way of doing that. So if they had a fire, power failure, something like that, there would be no way we could actually help them right at this point. So this redundancy would mirror the system that they already have in place. Um, not, a, and not as detailed and as fancy, but it, it would suffice that they would be able to transfer their dispatchers to our building and take care of the city um, in, in those situations. Well, and uh, the problem with the one that we've had is yes. super old and at some point kind of we lost parts. What's, yeah. the, what's kind of the lifespan on, on this? Um, they're telling us that 15 years with without issues and then it could extend you know beyond that the original the system we have now some parts of it date back to 1969 right in fact with a few exceptions it's older than anybody in the building other than myself and mike barrett but you know and, and we have been able to which building is he talking about <laughs> careful no um and one of the problems with it is it's been really hard to get parts um right. cvc has gone on the internet we've gone on ebay um and earlier in the fall, we actually used our last part. And when you go on eBay, you're buying a 1969 vintage part that's been torn out for some other reason because it wasn't reliable. And sometimes we end up buying a, a chunk of hardware that some of it's useful, some of it isn't. We've been able to kind of swap it back and forth, but those days are gone now. I guess where I was going with that is if this is the only bid, I don't want to make sure that it's still a good the, the right product yes. so that we're not in a place where in you know we're using old equipment yeah. and we're not planning for that and in 30 years we don't have the parts anymore i don't want to do that again right, right? In, in the system the police station has right now is a, a very good system it's it's current and it's updatable which is the the reason we've mimicked what they did they did a lot of research and made sure they had a good product that's expected to you know go on for years thank you Great. All right, so any further discussion? We have a motion that's been seconded. I hear no more discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Get your okay. radio, Chief. Okay. All right, so do you uh, want to do the sick bank real quick? Um, well, actually, um, do you do? I actually uh, sent the, the results of the sick bank out to each of you by email. Did everybody get it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I met this morning with Kathy and uh, gave her the paperwork. And what she will do is she'll utilize that as the employee uh, spends down his own personal account. Um, then they will dip into that. Great. Thanks. And then now we're on to the emergency management funds request. Yes. And actually, I have one other thing. Oh. I was approached by the good folks at Walmart um, <laughs> on Friday afternoon. And I've been driving Henry nuts, and I'm sorry. But they came forward with a grant and the grant that they would like to earmark um, to the fire department in particular um, about uh, awarding something for community impact. They said that they often work with us and we were the first ones that uh, came to mind. They've offered a grant for $5,000 um, and I've been working with uh, Mary and she'll be taking care of the finance side of it, but I'd like to apply for this grant uh, with the intentions of, of buying a skid um, load that would go in the back of our UTV. We're having a lot of um, you know, interactions in the Pine Hill Park area, a lot of wooded areas around in Menden and everything. With the amount of activity that you know, is going in, on in Pine Hill and around the city, um, the ability to go into the woods and, and bring a patient out on a skid instead of strapped to the top or the back end of our UTV is more desirable just from a safety standpoint. 
Um, the price of this unit has gone up considerably since then. So, uh, you know, I think that this grant puts us well on the way to, uh, to making that purchase with some other uh, donations we've had. I'll move to suspend the rules. Second. The motion to suspend the rules has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, you opposed? Great. And I'll move to authorize the fire chief to apply for the Walmart grant of $5,000. Thank you. Second. We have a motion to apply for the grant. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Debate? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Fantastic. Two down. Right. And my last thing. No. Um, as fire chief, uh, I, I work typically a 37 and a half hours or that's what the job requires. Um, in my budget, I have a $10,000 line item for salaries for emergency management. And in my contract, um, I have a little bit of a problem with my contract that I had signed about a year and a half ago. It's the only way I can draw any of those funds out to reimburse myself for my time is to ask for the board's approval prior to using the time and also to get the approval of the mayor makes it a little difficult when the state calls up and asks me to check the rivers, the streams, and the, uh, the ponds and stuff around the city two, three times a night. And so I was uh, looking to the board to get some relief from that so that um, perhaps maybe the mayor can approve on a weekly basis as I do those types of things. Um, he, he checks the payroll every every week I bother him and uh, <laughs> and just so there's a way of drawing it off why I bring it to you a year and a half into my contract is last year we were dealing with the Dunkley Dam project and Dunkley Dam had um, a lot of money rolling around and I was truly afraid that I wasn't going to be able to find the funding to cover the city side so I didn't approach uh, you folks about this ten thousand dollars because I was afraid I might have to use it for a match for another grant and uh, with the help of Todd Manise and some of the folks from the, um, the uh, dam safety folks, um, we were able to secure funds from places like Trouts Unlimited and everything, and it actually covered the city's cost. So that's kind of why I delayed in bringing it up until now. Alderman Davis? So I have a question. I don't know if it's for the mayor or, the, or Treasurer Markowski, but why um, if it's a salary line item related to emergency management as um why can't the chief draw on it without permission i guess for one thing yeah. as long as you submit whatever needed necessary paperwork that relates it to an emergency management event i, I don't understand so as far as i'm concerned um it was a go uh, you know it made perfect sense to me um, when it got down to payroll, it, it just uh, that piece of the uh, that part of the contract was made aware. I, I wasn't aware of that, so that's what I think the, the whole it, it all hinges on, on is that not little piece in the contract that says it needs board approval to draw down the funds. Next and part therefore, I certainly and I don't think payroll and, uh, right. and the treasurer's office and uh, myself wanted to do it without getting the proper approval. In, in so fact, that's why we're here. Yeah. In fact, the clause in my contract, I can read it to you. Additional pay for certain emergency management duties may be granted with the prior written approval of both the mayor and the board of aldermen. It, it was one of those things we probably missed it. Did you turn it Yeah. Yeah. My recollection is that there were, because Bill's filling both roles. Right. Um, I think I'm not sure that the line was delineated anywhere, but the thought was that he was going to be doing some of the emergency management. Uh, through his regular hours, I guess, and, and um, being paid th through his salary. This, I think, was looked at as um, a little bit of a safety net given what occurred most recently where the, the former chief worked a lot of overtime and then came afterwards and said, you know, I worked all these extra shifts and I'm hoping to get paid for those extra shifts. And the board was kind of in a position of, you know, an awkward position of they'd already been worked and he was looking to get paid for them. So I think, you know, the reason it's in there that way is that if they're, you know, it may not work like, like Chief Lovett has said, if you get a call in the middle of the night and you've got to respond to an emergency, you can't get everybody's approval. Um, but I think if there's, let's say he was, uh, you know, saying, well, I'm, I'm going to do a new emergency management plan. I'm not going to have time to do this within my normal hours. Um, you know, can I use $5,000 worth of additional time to do that? I think that's probably more what it was. Um, 
you know, what everyone was thinking at the time. But given that it sort of looks different now that we've signed the contract, um, there may be a way to, you know, because I'm assuming that the board is okay, uh, you know, to the extent that the mayor's okay with what Chief Lovett has outlined. Uh, but I think that was the, the reason to get the, the approvals is that, you know, so that somebody would be aware at least around the same time it was happening that it was going to be paid out rather than get kind of, a, you know, for lack of better words, a bill at the end of whatever's been done and kind of be in that awkward position of not wanting to deny it because someone's already worked it. Yeah, and, and I think the city attorney is correct in, in, in a lot of that. Uh, um, again, to remind us, you know, we have one person doing filling both roles. We're saving the city a significant amount of money without, you know, paying a full-time right. person to, to do the to management. Yeah. And right now, we're, you know, we're getting the job done. So, If I may ask one more question. So, Chief Lovett, so uh, you draw this from the $10,000 uh, if it's outside of that 37 and a half hour week, you're eight to five or whatever hours you, you are there during the day. So if you're called out at night because we have a issue with flooding or something, um, that's your intent to pull from that line. Right, okay. and, and, and also in all honesty, like the city's LEMP, it's right. a massive document to take that kind of time away that's from time. me being right. the fire chief isn't fair to the the, uh, the folks at the I fire agree. station and also the taxpayers because they they're looking for a 37 and a half hour fire chief so a lot of the work you know that I've done at home in the past and, and you know um, what I would do is submit it on my timesheet on a weekly basis so the mayor could review it and make sure that it's appropriate and then authorize me on a as I go basis so we won't get hit like uh, the attorney and that was correct we don't want to get a, a big bill at the end so to speak so if I, if I may, just one more time. So I, I don't have a problem um, relieving that so um, he can use his judgment to use that fund. I think it's still appropriate to file whatever paperwork is at maybe the end, whether it's with the mayor or whomever, to say this is what the money was used for above and beyond that 37 and a half hour. Um, but I, I feel it's certainly appropriate that the, the He's able to withdraw from the line if he feels it's necessary for emergency management funds, so I'll make that motion. Okay, great. Can we get a motion to suspend the rules? First? So, uh, thank you. Yep. <laughs> second. Second. Okay, motion is seconded. Do you want to make the motion just clear it up for me a little? I'll try, yeah, we'll vote on the motion to suspend. No, the rules. Sorry, yeah, good call. <laughs> All those in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. 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 Thank you. See? So I'll move uh, to authorize that the fire chief as acting as the emergency management director for the city of Rutland is allowed to withdraw from the salary line associated salary line item of $10,000 as needed when he's functioning in that capacity. Second. Okay. You know, My only question would be to the attorney because it states in the contract it has to be written permission. Does it have to be written permission or does now this vote count? count? Yeah. I think what I would suggest is that given the sentiment that maybe we work on an amendment to the uh, contract so that, you know, you can give permission tonight. I think that would be fine to do that. Um, right. uh, you know, obviously Bill is okay with you not giving it in written form. So we're sort of making a contract here by this resolution. Um, but I think it would make sense to amend the contract just to um, make, make sure that it's clear for the next folks that are, that are looking at it. Um, and, and if I can just jump in one, I think Jill, uh, I'm sorry, Bill is, is uh, underselling his, uh, the time he spends in his normal job because I'd be surprised if he's had any week that was 37 and a half, including the week he was, was out sick. I think he was uh, uh, singeing the phone, phone lines on all sorts of different things. So I think his, his job as fire chief is he, we're getting our money's worth um, on that. And then in addition, as he said, he probably hasn't charged much for all the additional time. Um, so this is uh, not something that I think anyone should be worried about, uh, that he's going to cut us off at 37 and a half and then start billing to that line. So. Okay, we have a motion. Thank you for the clarification. It's been seconded. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you So with much. that, too, at some point, I'll move to public safety the amendment to the fire chief's contract. Sure. Second. Okay, we have a motion to 
send to public safety the review of the contract that's been seconded. Just one uh, suggestion. It may be a simple enough amendment that I don't know if you want to take it up here or look at it here first Certainly. and decide if it should be referred. Certainly. It might, might save you yeah. a meeting. Refer yeah. to the city attorney. Yeah. So I, I'll move to refer to the city attorney to draft an amendment um, to, uh, to the Fire Chief Lovett's contract regarding the emergency management funds. Yeah, I'll accept that. Can we get rid of the okay. first motion, yeah. please? I did. I trashed it, Henry. <laughs> so we're going to strike the first motion. She trashed the first amendment. Her motion. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to strike all the first motion. We're going to amend it to refer to the city attorney. It's been seconded. Any discussion? The seconder agrees. The seconder agrees. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? There you go. Thank you. Thank yes. you, folks. Thank Appreciate you, it. Chief. Thank you. All right. Uh, Attorney Bloomer, we'll move your executive session to the end of the meeting. Is that good? Yep. Awesome. Uh, we've done reports of standing committees, so we're good there. Reports of select committees, we have none. Reports of representatives, we have none. Petitions, letters, and miscellaneous communications. We'll start with the license request for the farmer's market. Uh, Judith Dark, is Judith here? Yep. She's not here. Hmm. Right. So we have uh, a license and a check, is that right, to approve? Is that correct? I don't need to yeah. Part of the packet? So, Part of the packet. Hmm. Hmm. So I'll move to refer to community development. Okay. Second. We have a motion to refer to community economic development. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Questions? For, can you just clarify what? Just because want? I think it's appropriate to have a conversation. I don't have a problem with the um, downtown's farmer's market to begin on May 7th. I don't have a problem with the waiver of fee. I do want to have a discussion on their plans for winter as to where they'll be located. So we have a motion to move. To talk to them. The license to community economic development for uh, meeting has been seconded. Any other discussion? I'll I guess ahead. if it's possible, I'd like to separate those two out. Yeah. I think that discussion is super important to have, but we know we're going to approve it for the summer. Let's, we have a crazy CED schedule. To fit that in in time might not be realistic. Mm -hmm. Maybe refer just the winter piece. It's fine. Yeah. And there's no hurry to have yeah. that meeting, but I think the discussion has to be had. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll move to suspend the rules. Okay. Uh, can oh. I get, go so I was just going to uh, ask that uh, perhaps the board consider taking the action on, on the $500 mm -hmm. uh, you know, the summer and, and separate that out too um, for a couple of different reasons, you know, uh, because of the issues over at the Women's Farmers Market. I go every year or every week and the number of vendors are down, the number of customers are down. Uh, my guess is the, the amount of revenue is down. So, um, you know, uh, for us to consider, and maybe at some point we need to look at that $500 fee and the five or the fee that we uh, charge anybody using any of our parks. Um, I just don't think that this is the appropriate time for that. So uh, I would ask that you do exactly what you're doing. The fee isn't my concern. Mm -hmm. The location mm -hmm. is my concern. For what? indoor. For next winter. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. So if I may, um, thank you. Um, just to kind of update the board, and this was during, again, COVID, maybe about a year ago, probably, um, in, in over Zoom, and the, the conversation was why it was, that the cost was what it was. Um, this was something that was decided prior to me being here. However, something that I was tasked with was to find out what the actual cost was to hold this. And the cost really isn't on the park department, but it is on DPW. So I do believe this is a conversation that should be had, but I do believe they need to be involved in this. And so I would ask the same to, to move forward with this. And now that we can meet in person at some point, it should be discussed and maybe it could be done at the same time but let if we could move on with that if that makes sense and some of you weren't on the board at that point so yeah. that's where that kind of conversation has come from 
So, so let's deal with the, thank you very much. Let's deal with the motion to refer first, then we'll move on from there. So do you want to amend the motion to refer? So I'll, um, I'll amend my motion um, and, um, well, I'll move to refer only the discussion as to the plans um, for the location of the farmer's market for the upcoming winter season. Okay, so the motion to refer for the upcoming winter season only. You were the seconder, are you okay with that, Chase? Yes. Okay, it's been seconded. Any further discussion on the motion to refer? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Now I'll move to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll move for the approval of the Rutland Downtown's Farmer's Market for the Saturday hours of 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, for opening day to begin on May 7, 2022. Um, we'd also like, also keeping the winter, uh, or excuse me, the summer middle week market for Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. and to be consistent with the $500 yearly fee. Second. Your motion's been seconded. Any discussion? Yes. I do. Who seconded? Okay. I, hate to be the, I hate to be the bad guy in the room, but I need to protect my taxpayers downtown. I mean, these guys are actually competing with the business people downtown. You know, the bakeries, they sell them prepared food, all this stuff. And $500, and that's all they're paying for the whole summer, where these other taxpayers downtown are paying triple or quadruple or 10 times more than that. And we're not covering our costs with the city. I don't think we should be subsidizing enterprises like that. So I have no problem the farmer's market being there. I think it's a wonderful idea, but I think they need to pay their fair share. So maybe not this year, but next year we need to look at that really close, find out what the true cost is with all the departments, and make sure we cover that. Any other discussion? Comments? Okay, we have a motion. It's been seconded. No further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion passed. Thank you very much. All right, now we are on to the New Story Center ARPA request. Um, let's see here, I think I'm going to put his name in. Avaloy Lanning. Avaloy. Avaloy. All right, would you like to give us a yeah. quick briefing? Sure. Avaloy, yes. <laughs> thank you for correcting. Absolutely. Um, I didn't come prepared to um, say anything tonight, so I was just so happy to be, you know, out among people. Uh, um, we are, um, New Story Center has really exciting things going on, and for those of you who don't know New Story Center, or don't know us as New Story Center, we were formerly the Rutland County Women's Network and Shelter. We serve survivors of domestic and sexual violence in Rutland County. And um, we, have been, we have been plugging right along um, all throughout COVID. Our shelter has been full. We run a, um, we also have a motel pool um, that is not affiliated with ESD. We use, we use other motels in town um, to house survivors when our shelter is full, which is almost all the time. And so we, a few years ago, five years ago, we did a strategic plan. And in that strategic plan, we identified three things that we wanted to do. One was change our name, check. Um, the other was find a new office. And because our office, we, we are busting at the seams in an old building that wasn't ever meant to be an office in the first place. And, um, and then to start a capital campaign. And so all of the stars have aligned for us. And um, most of you probably know where our office is. It's at 101 Grove Street across from the Intermediate School right there on the corner. That was our original shelter building and we, that we got from the Sisters of St. Joseph um, 40 plus years ago. And um, that we, we reached, recently closed on uh, Peter Valente's office, which is at 92 Grove Street. So just catty corner across from us. And um, that is going to be our new office space. And they're hooking up our internet tomorrow. And so you may see the New Story team with our hand carts coming ac across <laughs> the road moving. We're all so excited to be in our new space. The space is beautiful. It has an apartment, which we will use for uh, survivor housing. We have an economic empowerment project. So it'll be longer term housing for a survivor that's working with a local business. And then 101 Grove Street, we are going to be converting back into shelter. 
and um, we are reimagining that space. Um, I, we've been working with an architect, Elizabeth Kuglis, who was formerly with the Housing Trust, is our project manager, and we are going to have seven total shelter units, sorry, six total shelter units and one office. Um, three of those units will be fully accessible. The building will have three kitchens, uh, four bathrooms. We'll be able to configure the space in different ways. And um, I've listened to the conversation here tonight talking about the motels, the, listening to Kim say people coming in for AAU and places don't have, they don't have anywhere to stay um, in town and because we've got some of our motels offline for um, housing. And um, so one thing I would say is that um, this, will, this will almost do away with our need as New Story Center to house people in area motels. Um, once we have the once we have the shelter up and running at the new the new building up and running we're going to create a new story campus between um, the the new shelter space and our existing shelter space where we'll have beautiful green area um, and just really reconfigure sort of that corner where we are right now and uh, we have applied it will, we've applied to VCHB for a grant for the full project. Um, and we've asked our, I think our full grant to VCHB, uh, our request is 1.2 million for the entire project. So all of the landscaping, knocking down an old garage, doing all the renovation of shelter, the reimagining of that building, and um, some work in our existing shelter as well. Um, our capital campaign, our goal for our capital campaign is $350,000. Um, that will, we have kicked it off sooner than we thought we would because we want to support this application and this project. So we already have, we kicked it off um, the 1st of March and we've already got um, a couple of seed donors for the capital campaign. And um, so I, I'm just, I'm thrilled about this project and so we are respectfully asking the city for some some of the ARPA funds that have been received to help us bolster our application to VCHB and offset some of those costs uh, for the renovation of 101 Grove Street in, into shelter space. Our request is for $100,000, but you know we can we can talk about that. We will always take more. Um, no, we we we, uh, we are we are just very very excited about this and excited about the the growth and change, what it means for survivors, what it means for our community, and from where I stand, what it means for our organization um, and the amazing women that I work with every day. So um, I I think that's that's it. Okay. I'll be uh, move to refer to Finance Committee. Second. We have a motion to refer to Finance Committee. It's been seconded. Any discussion questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to explain. Okay. So, New Story Center. So, we have an application for a special events permit for uh, Rutland Great Strides, which was requested by. Jim Gilbert, this is in your packet, I believe, or it was emailed to you. Um, Both. This is Stick Fibrosis Foundation. Is Jim here? Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor? Looking for two shades. Is that what you got? That's no. no. no, no. They're next. We have to go in a little bit. I'll move to suspend the rules. Uh, we have a motion to suspend Second. the rules. Second. It's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. So I'll move to approve the special events permit from four Rutland Great Strides for May 14th, 2022 from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Walk on the park trails, Pine Hill Park, to benefit the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Second. We have a motion to approve. It's been seconded. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are now in Board of Control Commissioners. We need we a motion to go into the Board of Control Commissioners. Need a motion to go on the Board of Control Commissioners. Don't move. Seconded? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. All right. Now in the Board of Control Commissioners.
First issues is Touche's new owner applications for first and third class liquor license and outdoor uh, uh, consumption. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to circulate the license for application, or app, the license for application for signature. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion to circulate license of application for first and third and outdoor uh, consumption for signature. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Would you guys like to say anything or? We don't want to waste your time if we don't need to. <laughs> awesome. We don't have to change nothing to see you all there. Okay, great. Sounds good. Probably got 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All those. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's what's happening. Right? Okay. Here, right? Retire. I don't blame them. I know where they are. Yeah. Okay. Senator. Senator. Right? All right. We have a motion that's been seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Circulate for signature. All right. And now we have. In addition, thank you very much. Hopefully, we see you guys all there. Yep, absolutely. Congratulations. So we have uh, another uh, request from Restoration Barbecue for a first-class liquor license and outside consumption. Chairman, I'll move to uh, circulate for signature. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to Second. circulate for signature. It's been seconded. Question. Discussion, go ahead. Where is the outside consumption? Should be on Main Street, right? Or on Woodstock Avenue? Mm -hmm. Yes. So my understanding. Outside the building or on the front side? Of the my side? understanding is in the back grass area. He's going to set a couple picnic tables out there okay. to allow, uh, you know, customers to utilize the, the beer and barbecue. Is there enough buffer against the uh, housing behind there? Yeah, there's a couple hundred feet to go back okay. to Temple that's Street. That's, all I want. that's, that's good. Cool. The motion's been seconded. Any further discussion? Nope. <laughs> no further discussion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, passing that around. Thank you very much. All right, can I get a motion to exit Board of Control Commission? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we are now out of Board of Control Commissioners. Do we have any unfinished business to come before the board? Okay. Hearing no unfinished business, uh, we have miscellaneous motions, resolutions, and new business. We're almost done, folks. Um, the Raise Grant Resolution Federal Agency or Department of Transportation Grant. Alderman Neary. Uh, yeah, so um, myself, uh, Brennan Duffy, the mayor and president, um, Dungis met with Lee Khan. Um, the other day at City Hall about this opportunity to uh, be a co-applicant on a raise grant. Raise grant are the large, excuse me, federal highway uh, grants uh, awarded to cities and states. Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission, the MPO in Burlington, is the lead applicant. They applied last year for a project in Rutland, Addison and Chittenden County that is a planning two million dollar planning grant for rail and transit oriented development now they want they were close last year but they didn't get it so to bolster their application they wanted to expand the physical sort of area and focus of this grant to include both Rutland City Virgins and Burlington so they asked us if we wanted to be a part of this grant no match no commitment no nothing so we only could be uh, awarded up to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for planning purposes only and so what we need to do this grant is due in 10 days so what we need to do <laughs> is meet in committee quickly um, sign a resolution assemble a quick group of potential projects that would fall under this planning grant and then submit our portion to CCRPC to package up for their application. So, you know, happy to answer any questions. It's still very fluid, but generally speaking, the process would look like this, and that would be a motion to circulate for signatures dependent on a CED meeting before this is due. I'm assuming we would try to piggyback on Wednesday's 
is it Wednesday's meeting? Mm -hmm. um, to with Brennan Duffy and the other parties involved to uh, essentially complete our portion of this application. Um, so that's sort of the general timeline. Okay. So is that, is that there's a motion to? I can answer questions before. I'll second. Motion. I'll ahead. second the motion for okay. debate. So yeah, I guess to clear up the motion, the motion would be circulate for signatures, uh, a resolution to support the raise grant application following a CED committee meeting. Okay. And I'll second. second right. Yep. So, um, Go ahead. question. So do we, has there been a list determined of projects already? Um, so we, in our meeting with Lee Khan the other day, we spitballed a bunch of potential projects. We don't need them to be set in stone, but it's an, it lays out a framework for a potential project. So if awarded, we can fine tune a proposal and a scope, but we need to generally come at it with some ideas. We have a downtown strategic plan to pull potential projects from. We have this TIF district to pull the potential projects from and other sort of planning resources. So I think we can do it. It doesn't need to be a uh, all-inclusive list by any means, but it needs to at least lay out that general framework. Um, and this is transportation, transportation money. It is transportation money, but some of the planning efforts don't have to be transportation completely focused. So a city master plan might be able to be funded out of this. Uh, a streetscape downtown plan, a updated hotel market Center analysis. Street? Center Street, no, nothing for implementation. So if there was a plan associated with it, then potentially, which we're kind of going through the plan now. But that being said, anything under the sun, $700,000 in planning goes a very long way. Even if we're only awarded 300,000, mm -hmm. it would still be more planning money than we've seen in a long time. So it's all about getting it while it's good and then figuring out the fine tuned details after. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Gill and Mr. Mayor. Unless you want to go first, you want to go first, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, sure. I, just uh, <laughs> uh, this, I think, complements a lot of the stuff that we're already doing, yeah. and um, there is quite a bit of transportation money that's floating around, and there's absolutely no reason why the city of Rutland shouldn't be a part of of grabbing that while it's there. Um, I, the uh, train is going to be uh, going up to Burlington starting uh, July, I believe it's 19th, um, and. There's going to be an awful lot of extra riders, more ridership on that uh, section of the train and all the way down in New York City. I just think that there's an immense amount of opportunities to develop areas around rail stations and rail lines that we should take uh, full advantage of. And this is this is the first step. Oh my God. Um, Lee Khan, huh? My buddy from a long time ago. Yes, Washington, D.C. Dave's buddy, too. Dave's <laughs> buddy, too. Anyway, uh, the reason why I'm, I want to ask a question, because it's transportation, and I know we talked about it, and I know when Middlebury was putting the tunnel in, we were up there, this is moons ago, when we were talking Middlebury to, to lower the tunnels so we can do double stacks and stuff like that through there. Um, is there talk about doing uh, container service transfer stuff? Is there talk about uh, bud cars so we can run the daily line from Rutland to Burlington every day, twice a day? Part of this Those grant things for are the part of that? Yeah, part of this grant for the Burlington portion is to electrify yeah. relic bud cars and that could Which is also the old trolley system. extend down to here as well. So yeah, all those, right? I mean, all those. Are, okay, then yeah. fine. At this point, the, it's a wide open net. Yep, let's do that. Okay. All the way come. Thank you, President Dungeons. Uh, question for the attorney. So I'm really interested in doing this. I actually just want to make sure we're doing it the right way. Is it is it correct procedure to circulate for signature now, sign it contingent upon having a meeting, or would it be smoother to have the meeting, convene a special meeting to sign, or does it matter one way or another? Well, I think in this case it seems like the committee's not necessarily being used to make a recommendation back to the board. It's being used like brainstorming and it'll be done publicly because it will be more than a quorum. So I think if that's everyone's understanding and they're okay with it, then we could do as proposed, you know, pre pre authorized basically. Well, the resolution's worded pretty broadly. I looked at it really quickly. It just says offer this resolution in support of participation in the raise grant application process. Um, so I think the board seems comfortable doing that. And then the fact that you've got to have some, you can't just say, 
yeah, give us the money and we'll figure <laughs> out. I think, we'll yeah, we'll I think, I think the way that you're using um, CED is, is not like tr the traditional way, but because you're not looking for them to come back with a recommendation to go forward with this, I think it would be fine the way it's proposed given the, you know, to save people the, the extra meeting. And I think, especially since we're not the primary on this, you know what I mean? It will be passed through an MPO, so yeah. we're not at any sort of risk or obligation either, right? Yeah, I think if everyone is fine with going forward with participation, that's really what you're voting on tonight, and the fact that there needs to be, you know, or, or I mean, maybe you're delegating to the CED co committee to come up with that list of, of um, potential projects that would then go into the application. So if everyone understands that and is, is okay with that, that you won't get a chance, you know, you can go obviously probably go to that meeting and uh, give your two cents, but it'll be the committee members themselves that probably ultimately vote on the, um, what goes into the, uh, to the, uh, the grant. If everyone's okay with that, then I think that's what you're doing is fine. Um, Certainly, to Larry Bill. And I appreciate the clarification. I just didn't want us to miss an opportunity based on technicality. Yep. Okay. So, based on that, Alderman Gill. I just I think we need to get on board here. We need to be a player, like we were with the Middlebury Tunnel and some of the other projects on the rail line all the way up through. And if we want to be a player, we got to be in the game. So, I think we need to get on board. Ah, get on board. Great. Okay. Based on that, I'd like to split this up into two motions if we can, because we need to suspend the rules to approve the circulation for signature. So, if we can approve, the motion on the floor is to circulate and have the committee meeting. Can we strike and amend to remove the circulation you want piece? want those two separate motions? And, do, and, do, and then we'll, we'll approve that and then move? Yeah, okay, great. I agree with it. So, so then the motion on the floor becomes to uh, send the committee the, the list development uh, to CED to be held at the next CED meeting. Both good with that? Yep, okay. that's that. Any further discussion on that piece? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then move to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. We have a second. second. Okay, it's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we have a motion to move circulate, to circulate for, for signature. Second. Okay. Motion to circulate for signature. Resolution, it has been seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. And now we will move on to my quick comment here before we go into um, uh, executive, session. executive session. So I, uh, as the board president, am able to request from the chairs of each committee a progress report. Uh, progress report will list off anything that's been sent to committee in the past two years and what is currently being worked on, what isn't being worked on, and um, what you know is soon to be terminated or moved out of committee based on time. Uh, I'd like to get that report within the next two weeks. There is no motion to be that just put in Any questions? Not a question, just an uh, announcement is all. Okay, go ahead. I handed out the uh, flyer for the Thank you. for the Center Street design review or alternative design review. Um, definitely suggest all the aldermen attend if they can. That's going to be Monday, April 25th at the Paramount. We're going to hold a special session for just the business owners on the street, but there will be a second session immediately following at 6:30 p.m. Please attend. It will be uh, a really good opportunity to learn about the project and also weigh in on the uh, particular design elements. Thanks. Okay. Any other miscellaneous motions, resolutions, or new business to come before the board? Okay, Do you have language? Sure. One thing I was going to ask is I know the union president is here. Mike, I don't know if you want to say anything before we go into executive session or if you want to wait or you, know, you can go home too, but just wanted to give you a chance. If, <laughs> If, uh, if you did want to say anything. Okay, that being said, then I've got uh, our motions here. Motion to find that premature general public knowledge regarding the negotiation of a labor relations agreement would clearly place the city at a substantial disadvantage because the discussion will divulge the board's position on the agreement provisions to be negotiated. So moved. So moved. Second. Seconded. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then a motion to enter into executive session with the inclusion of the fire chief, deputy fire chief Mangan, 
the mayor, the treasurer, the clerk, and the city attorney to discuss the labor relations agreement as allowed under Title I, Section 313A1B. So moved. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Take care.